one of the things we're going to need to do here is make a subnet calculator. I'll explain why in a few minutes, why we need this subnet calculator. So here's how we build it, though. We make three columns. In column one, we put bits. So these are the number of bits that will be counting in binary in the IP address or in the mask. Second column is going to be networks. And the third column is going to be hosts. Now here's how we fill this out. In the bits column, we start counting with zero, and we count as high as we like. In the networks column, what we're going to do is start counting at one, and then double every number after that. And the idea here is that we're taking the number two, and we're raising it to the power of the number of bits here. So two to the zero power is one, two to the first power is two, 2 squared, or 2 to the second power, is 4. 2 to the third power is 8. And we can accomplish the same math without having to do the exponential math by just doubling the number above it in the network column here. So 1 times 2 is 2. 2 times 2 is 4. Times 2 is 8. Times 2 is 16. Times 2 is 32. 64. 128. 256. 512. 1024. 2048, 4096, 8192, 16384, and so on. Last, in the host column then, all we're going to do is subtract 2 from the network column. So 1 minus 2 is negative 1, that doesn't count. 2 minus 2 is 0, again doesn't count. 2 minus 4 is 2, 8 minus 2 is 6, 16 minus 2 is 14, and so on. So this is a very simple calculator. It's not complex to build at all. When you're taking the CCNA exam, you are going to want to either memorize this calculator or at least how to create it. And that's kind of the nice part about this calculator is you don't have to memorize the calculator. You just have to know a couple of rules about how to build it. And they're pretty simple. So when you go into the exam, you can quickly write this calculator down. And this will help you answer any subnetting problems that you may see while taking that exam. Better yet, this calculator is really good to use in industry because you can constantly have a way to quickly look up how the bits correlate to the networks. We're going to see how to use this later on, but now you know how to build it. So to get started with subnetting, let's review a couple pieces of information about IP addresses because they're so critically important to understanding how we're going to do subnetting. 